of Advent. We're getting closer to that special day. And we've got someone now who's going to present three gifts. She's no stranger. And she's someone that's been very vital to us in our time at Unity of Melbourne. She's always very welcome. Would you make her welcome again? Grace Merrick. Thank you, Grace. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So you want me to spout forth, do you? Go for it. Okay. All right. Cool. Good morning. Uh, it's fun to see you all. And um, it's fun to be able to do this wonderful thing with sharing across the miles and that we're doing. I'm just really enjoying the fact that I'm connecting with so many people around the world in various ways through my Facebook connections with some groups that I'm involved in. I'm in contact with people in Scotland and of course lots of places, different places in North America and lots of friends around the world and it's lots of fun. So I'm enjoying that part of it very much. Anyway, this morning, you know, wanted to share with you about three, three of the Christmas gifts. Um, now, it, uh, please understand it, not all of them. There are more gifts than this. This is just three that I've picked for today. The first one is gratitude. And the second one is cooperation. And the third one is glory within. But let's look at the gratitude thing. I bet most of you have heard oodles of people saying you should write gratitude lists all the time, right? Hands up if they did, if you know what I'm talking about. And we're told to make a list of five or 10 in the morning and five or 10 at night and what have you. Now, I'm not opposed to it, but there is uh, sometimes it's been really difficult to do because sometimes I have been miserable, absolutely miserable, locked in with my black mood and unable to be grateful for anything. Uh, I have to really struggle to say, oh, I'm grateful I've got food in the refrigerator or something like that, you know what I mean? But it can be really difficult. And so gratitude, sometimes we often have, hard stuff going on in our lives. And it's really hard to find the gratitude, isn't it? I'm sure you all understand what I'm talking about. When things are really tough, it can be very hard. Well, one of the things is that uh, I've discovered that even when there's hard stuff going on, I have to notice that, notice that it's hard and be grateful that I've noticed. Does that make sense? Even for just noticing that it's hard, I'm grateful. And then I have to I get move forward into being able to feel gratitude for how I feel. Gratitude that I can feel. Gratitude that I know that feelings are there. And I know that I want to feel better or enjoy something more. And then I've moved into a different space of wanting to feel better. So then I can say, oh, thank heavens. I'm grateful that I know that I want to feel better. So at least I've got on to something. And then I decide that I'm going to open myself to something more. I may not know what it is, I may not be able to see it, but I just make a decision that I am going to open and to think more about what it is that I want. One of the other things I've learned through the, the unity movement and all this stuff is that uh, if I focus on my breathing, it helps get me into the, into the, um, the inherent now. And so I then will say, okay, I better breathe because I've been trained over the years to breathe, 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 you know, right? So I take in a breath, breathe out another breath, take in another breath, breathe it out, and allow the breath to come and go. And while I'm breathing, I'm noticing that my lungs are expanding, my chest is expanding. And as I'm breathing, something is expanding. I can feel, begin to feel the expansion of the energy in me. And of course, the word expansion, by the way, <laughs> uh, is very important 
because originally the word heaven was talking about the concept of expansion. The word heaven was uh, in Greek uh, came from Uranus, which means expansion because it means the, the heavens, the universe, everything. And so it's where beyond where you can see life ending. And so I love the word heaven. I'm in heaven and I'm expanding. And so when I can get my breath into this business of expanding, I can then be aware of the fact that I'm in heaven. And in heaven, I can imagine what I want to have. I can allow the pleasing things to expand. So I then can find some gratitude for the ability to expand. And I can do that lots of times through the day. It doesn't have to be just one big high holy moment in the morning. I can do it while I'm walking around the house. I can do it while I'm driving. I can do it while I'm washing up. I can do it in the shower. Particularly good to do it while washing up and in the shower because of the running water. Because the running water helps get us tuned into, into the flow of life and into life moving. And so the flowing water is excellent. I can um, also be aware that the water is washing off the grime and slosh and stuff that's been in there and it can open me up. Water has a healing presence. It's very much part of the creative thing and running water is a wonderful thing to be with. You know how good you feel in the shower? Well, that's because of the running water and I get that. I do my thing with my washing up. <laughs> I say I'm getting the same buzz that I would get if I was having a shower, you know, just let's get on with it and enjoy it. Now then you see, when we've got some sort of gratitude that can go logically and sensibly within us, we can then get to the whole thing about cooperation. Now, I don't know what cooperation means to you, but it literally means co-working together, co-operating, operating, performing, co, and co means together. So it's performing together. Now, once more, I don't know about you, and we're not in one of those audiences where I can see you and see if you're nodding or what you, whether you're agreeing with me or not. I can't pick up from the photos, actually, except for Wendy. <laughs> But uh, the thing is that cooperating means working together. Now, when we can see that we have two different voices rabbiting on in our heads, we've got the voice for what I call the diseased ego. Ego means I am. And what the diseased ego is about is about what we made up stuff about ourselves as little kids usually and through the years about what we are. And that is usually lies. But the point is that we have that voice and we've been playing it and listening to it since we were little tiny kids and we still are, whether we like it or not. And we have to keep dealing with it. And then the other voice is what we call the voice for God. And that's the intuition, that's the internal voice. It's the part of us that's connected with the Christ. It is the Christ in us and it speaks to us, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, speaks to us, the voice for God. And we have the two voices, right? If you do know what I'm talking about, just raise your hand for a minute, will you please? Do you know about the two voices? Great. Okay, good. Everybody's got them. Oh, yes, good on you, Diane. <laughs> and Diane's got two lots of two voices. <laughs> the, um, the two voices go on and on and on. Now, what I, I learned a little while ago, it really came through to me very clearly and I got to really work with it hard, was that if I will be grateful for hearing the voice for the diseased ego, the make, made stuff up stuff, the lies I tell myself, if I'll be grateful that I've noticed it, I can then say, ah, but the truth is probably the opposite. And I can then go into whatever the opposite is, which will be the truth. 
And so I can be grateful for having noticed and found and being show, had it shown up by the diseased ego for me to contemplate that it is not how I really am. I am a child of God. I do not inherit all these things that I had over here. I can change my attitude towards myself, to you, towards everything. If I decide that I'm going to be grateful to that voice and I'm going to allow it to help me get into the voice for God and what I want. Don't you like that one? I think it's great. And it's much more fun for me in my life and doing things. And I find the, um, uh, the two voices give me an opportunity to, to heal. Now, what are we healing? We're healing a belief in a sense of separation from God. And that's in our souls. It's not just in our personalities, although we need to heal it there too, the, the personalities we walk around with, the masks. But the thing is that it's in our soul. And our whole, I believe, right, now I'm telling you, no, deep belief, I believe the whole purpose of our being on the planet is for us to take, make progress in healing the belief in a sense of separation in our souls. And then I remember that everybody has a soul. We're all different. And I use the hand example. Each person is like a different finger on my hand, but we're all part of hand. And each finger has a different function, a different way of operating, different size, different connectedness, but we're all part of God. And so each soul is doing its own path. And I can't tell you what's right for your soul. And you can't tell me what's right for my soul because we are slightly different. We are different. And we have the, but we have the same thing because we all have the energy and the power and the presence of the spirit of God's life within us. And spirit means breath. And back to the breathing we go. <laughs> Don't you love it? It comes in with breath. And we're on this wonderful thing called earth. And we've got, and we're here to heal within ourselves, not within anybody else, but within ourselves. We're in ourselves to heal the belief in the sense of separation from God. Now we've got lots of big mixed stuff in our minds because we've got the thinking and feeling all mixed up. And I personally believe that thoughts come before feelings, but you know, all the time. But we can never mind whether you want to argue about that or not. But thinking and feeling are within us, and we've got mixed stuff in there. We've got pleasant and unpleasant feelings, and we've got scary or hopeful ones. We've got chirpy thoughts and feelings, or we've got happy, miserable ones. You know, we can be hopeful or cheery or happy, or we can be envious of other people. And we can be, uh, we can think that we're the victim. And we can take exception to something that someone said. And we've decided that they're really against us and they really don't like us and we're no good and blah, blah, blah. Or we can say, well, they're envious, so they must have something about us that they like and they wish they had it. So I'll send them some kindly thoughts. So instead of feeling angry with people, which is a tendency to do, we can have the opportunity to see that they are just healing their sense of separation. And we can cooperate with that. We learn to cooperate with others by allowing them to have their own healing space and by allowing them to expand into feeling better about themselves. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me because I can see it moving through people as I go around and I see in groups of people when it's it, the dynamic is going on where other people are supporting, genuinely supporting people in their progress. You can see it expanding and growing stronger. So we've got the big lie to, sol to solve and to fix, the big lie that we're separate from God because we're not. 
Um, we can be feeling overwhelmed by all the stuff that's going on or excited in a way that we can find the pleasantness within all the activities. Now, if we really work on it, we can find the pleasantness in everything that's going on. And that's lots of fun. And we can find calmness no matter what's going on. Now, that's a big trip because when everything's been chaotic and quite often this place where I'm staying now, living now, there's a lot of noise going on. And in the middle of that, I can choose to stop and say, I will feel calm. Now, do I do it all the time? No. But I do pull myself together and say, now, come on, kid, you can feel calm in the middle of this. And when I decide that I want to feel calm, guess what? It gets calmer. The big thing is when I'm when we're upset or when we're disturbed about something is to realise that what we're looking for is a solution. And if we decide we're going to look for a solution, we won't keep wallowing around in the stuff we don't like. We will have our focus on where is the solution? What can I open up to? Can I open my mind a little bit more and allow something else to come in? And so we're looking for finding the solution. We're looking to find peace and we're looking to find comfort. I just want to say a little word about the word comfort. The com part, C-O-M, means with. And the fort part, this comes from Latin, the fort part is strength. So comfort is with strength. Now, I want to find strength. Well, where is the strength of God? It's within me. And so if I'm willing to expand and open up to the possibility of peace, to the possibility of harmony, to the possibility of looking something for something for which I can be grateful, I can turn to what is within me and ask for comfort, strength, and harmony. And I get to see that it's cooperation with the negative, nasty, diseased ego chatter and is saying, I want to turn that into the opportunity to find more peace and to find more of God's presence and God's power. And if we have anything unresolved in us, in our lives, in our mental, emotional, spiritual life, it comes up to be healed. And we are grateful that we have a way to look for the solution. And so let's do this now. Let's take a few moments to turn within and to look inside us for the gratitude for the cooperation, for the glory of God is what we're going to find within us. So if you will, take a nice deep breath and close your eyes if you want to, leave them open if you want to, and allow the spirit of truth to visit you. If you will, as you're breathing in, imagine you are inviting in the spirit of truth, the awareness of the presence of God. You're inviting it in. And as you let it come in and your breathing continues, I invite you to become aware that you've often put yourself as being separate from godness, from love, from power. You've often put yourself separate from the presence of God. And forgive yourself immediately for that. 
and say, thank you for showing me. And then if you will, put your attention towards what you want. Yes, I've felt those things and I don't want to. I want to feel your love. And as we do this and we think about feeling the love within us and the power, the power is there operating our bodies all the time. The power of the, the way the heart pumps the body around, the blood around the body is absolutely incredible. It's amazing. And we have this power within us. And the breath, the ability to open up our lungs and allow fresh breath to come in and to allow, have the muscles and, and operation available to breathe out all that has been useful before and is no longer useful. We can do this with our minds. We can breathe out the thoughts, feelings, beliefs that cause us to be miserable. And we can open up to receiving the freedom, the solution, the something better that is possible in our minds. And as we do this, we can know that our souls are being healed and give thanks. Thank you, God, I'm doing a little bit of healing of my soul today. Thank you, God, I'm doing a little bit more of healing of my soul today. And we can be grateful that we have the power and the ability to fully use the creative energy of the universes, the one presence and the one power that is everywhere equally and evenly found in all of the universes, the galaxies, in everything that we can see, the energy is in it. And we are always in the holy presence. And we are part of that holy presence. So just for a moment, give yourself credit for being the holy presence. And decide to enjoy yourself more as you share your holiness, your greatness with those around you, the people at work, the people at home, the people you're driving with, the people in the supermarket, wherever it is. And right now, let's have it with the people who are on screen with us and open our eyes gradually and look at the people who are with us right now on the screen and know that we're sharing that energy and that love with you all. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Grace. What magical gifts. And it doesn't cost anything. That no. was the most <laughs> meditation. And really, I think, I don't think we want to come back. I think we want to stay in this space. So um, we look forward actually to going through this week with those words resonating within us and we'll take them to heart on our Advent journey as we go. So with those three gifts, we're going to now